So I was sitting downstairs a little while ago, eating a package of double stuff Oreos, when all of a sudden, I came across somewhat of a mathematical epiphany. The size of a package of double stuff Oreos. And the size of a package of regular Oreos are pretty much exactly the same. Now, seeing as how Oreo, more importantly Nabisco, at least in this case, is not a potato chip company. Nor do they make anything else that comes in little bags that are only half full, thereby belying just how much food is in the package. So we can assume that Oreo is, being an old and rather successful company, relatively adept at efficiently using the space that they are given with a package. So, assuming that the laws of physics are still in place, and also assuming that Double Stuff Oreos are mathematically accurately named, which I doubt, but we're going to use that for the sake of argument at the moment, simply because I don't feel like doing the other calculations, then a regular Oreo is half of the size of a Double Stuff Oreo. That means that there are half as many Double Stuff Oreos in one package than there are regular Oreos. Now, logically, I know you're still getting the same amount of food, food, in each package. But does anyone else feel somewhat inexplicably gypped? Like a sentence of death, I got no options left, I got nothing to show now. Down on the ground, I got seconds to live, and you can't go now. Cause love, like an invisible bullet, shut me down, and I'm bleeding. Hi, 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 me droogies. Today, I actually have something specific to talk about, unlike last time. Today, we are going to talk about writing in reference to a specific trilogy of movies, namely, the Matrix Trilogy. Now, virtually everybody that saw the Matrix, the very first Matrix movie, was absolutely blown the fuck away by it. Am I right? They were either blown away by the special effects that had not been used in American movies very fluidly before. Or they had been blown away by the sheer intelligence of the plot and the philosophical content of the movie. So, while some of the movie-going population felt a little bit uneasy when the Wachowski brothers announced that there was going to be a trilogy of said Matrix movies, most of the people were excited to see the rest of the trilogy. They were excited to see what happens, to find out how the story ends. Plus. They were thrilled at this chance to get to see another two movies that they had hoped would be just as good, or at least close, to the quality of the first one. However, a lot of people went to go and see the second and third movies, and were very, very disappointed. Now here's something that you folks that don't write, don't seem to grasp, and don't understand. There are two basic forms of writing. Regardless of what style you're writing in, what genre, there are basically two categories that writing falls into. First category is writing that you force out like a fake orgasm. The second category is good writing. Now, because of those little annoying things called deadlines, Almost all writing has traits from both categories. Because, even though they're doing good, fantastic, strong writing, they have a deadline. And eventually, they're just going to have to force something out. 
divorced writing is something like, oh, I don't know, Jay Leno. Good writing is something like, in my opinion, The Matrix. First problem we're going to address is the huge amount of people that expected the second two movies to be just as philosophical and eye-opening and whoa, mindfuck as the first one. The Wachowski brothers, seeing the budget that they had for the first Matrix movie, I'm going to go ahead and assume we're not intending to necessarily make three movies. They may have had some sort of concept that they would like to make three movies, but I don't think they had any inkling of just how fucking hugely, massively, colossally popular the first movie was going to be. Therefore, they really had no point of view as to what they were going to be able to do with sequels, or even if they were going to be able to make them. So, we'll take the assumption that the first movie was originally written and meant to stand on its own. Because, had circumstances been at their absolute worst, that's what the movie would have had to do. It would have had to stand by itself. That's why they made one movie and not three at the same time. Now, in order to have a philosophy or a philosophical concept permeate and intelligently be in all three movies of a trilogy, you have to have the concept that you are going to have a trilogy to begin with. The only trilogy that I've ever seen that carries over its concepts through all three movies, while all three movies in and of themselves stand alone as separate movies, is the original Star Wars trilogy, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. That one, okay? And that's because George Lucas, at that point in time, was fucking nuts! And even though, he didn't really have a good budget to make the first movie, and he had no idea if he was really going to make the second and third movies, he went ahead and had a concept for those anyway. Which, in all honesty, is just setting yourself up for disappointment, and he just happened to get lucky. 